play their first match on home soil since July of 2022. Let's check out the Sports Salt Lake USA Eagles starting lineup. Some familiar faces in the engine room for the USA. Fawcett, Mullen, Brakely, and Captain Greg Peterson share 132 caps between them. The other half of the pack has just 10 total caps and it includes Utah Warrior Barely Wilson making his USA debut tonight. The Eagles welcome back former Captain Bryce Campbell in the midfield. He pairs up with Seattle Seawolves rising star Tevite Lopetti. Major League Rugby backline player of the year Nate Oxberg is at the wing. And newcomer Nick McCarthy, the spark plug. He suits up at nine. He had a really good summer series. Head coach Scott Lawrence has a few extra reserves to choose from as both teams go with a 26-player roster. He uses the extra spots for two additional forwards and sticks with tr three traditional backs. A bit of a statement about the physicality he wants to bring to the game, but overall, four players looking to make their debut off the bench tonight. We could see a lot of new guys here in the Destination Sports starting lineup for Stad Tolozon from Toulouse, France. The most experienced USA Eagle in the game with 66 caps is the Toulouse tighthead prop number three. David Anu who plays for his club tonight against his fellow Americans. Flinker Alvin Placine has 100 appearances for Toulouse and is the most experienced player for the Red and Black. The world's best scrum half, Antoine Dupont, is back home playing in the World Cup for France. So former French international Artur Retier runs the show at scrum half. Hugo Mola is the head coach, eighth season. He played for Toulouse for seven years and favors a fast, flareful rugby approach. Tonight's official is Luke Rogan, Kat Roach, and Khalil Harrison are the assistants. Derek Summers is the TV official, TMO. Perfect. Toulouse right. in the red and black, the United States in all white with red trim. And we are underway in Sandy, Utah's Billy Searle sends it into the night sky, caught by the United States just outside the 22 as they will get the offense going. Nick McCarthy, just his fourth game for the USA. We'll give it up to Nate Brakely, the lock for New York Iron Workers of Major League Rugby. And here comes a box kick from McCarthy. It is deflected. Caught by Stade Toulouson. This is the winger, Dimitri Delib. That's three caps to the 15s and 7s for France. Retier assessing over to Hugo Reyes. There's Cost. Searle finding a seam. Goes to ground. Lopetti on the tackle for the USA. Quick ball inside as Banos is driven back by Bailey Wilson. Local player for the Utah Warriors of Major League Rugby. Inside ball to Jan Bobila. Right at midfield. Not rolling away, called against the United States. Tap and go for Toulouse. The eight man, Teo Intimac. Berger, Searle, Cost on the outside. Bobbled. And then the United States takes it. Augsburger kicks into touch on the advantage. But it'll come back. Let's check out tonight's Keys to Victory, brought to you by Hump International. For the United States, they have to work at every opportunity. They have to put pressure on this Tucson team at breakdowns all over the field. They have to really put in a shift. For the, for the boys in black, they just have to push the tempo. They have to really push this Eagle side to the limit. You saw they got the first penalty of the game, and they went quickly right away. Look for them to up the tempo all night long. Good line out from Toulouse. Getting past the game line, 10 meters from midfield. Stade Toulouson. Many members of this team playing in the World Cup. We'll talk about that throughout the broadcast. But that was a knock on. You can't have the ball spill forward off of you, and the United States will get a scrum. Having played in three World Cups and many games for the United States, what are these first five minutes like as you settle into a game against a team like Stade Toulouson? I think we mentioned it in the broadcast, I mean, how devastating it is, but you can see the energy there just coming into contact. There's been some big hits so far from the Eagles. The energy's up. Those opening five minutes, you're coming out of the locker room. Greg Peterson's likely just amped you up quite a bit, and you just want to get out there and make the first hit. And so the Eagles playing a bit of defense these opening three minutes, but they have made some big sticks and sent some black jerseys flying already. So lots of energy tonight in Utah. Our first look at the scrum as Nick McCarthy puts in. It's hooked back by Dylan Fawcett. And here come the Eagles. Luke Carty 
To the outside, Christian Dyer of the Houston Sabercats in MLR. And Stad Tolozon takes it away, holding on, called against the United States. You get tackled, you go to ground, you gotta let that ball go. And the U.S. just basically lured into that trap that time. They come down this short side. You can see the fans getting a little bit excited. Dyer has lots of space in front of him, but ultimately, he isolated himself. He put himself so far in front of his forward pack. There were only two backs there. Luke Cardi and Bryce Campbell, the only ones to clean out, really. So you can see just one white jersey there on scene. A couple black jerseys on scene. That's Luke White, number eight. It's just slow getting there because, again, they took up all that green space in front of them ran away from their support, and the USA turns over their first attacking piece that they had. Long throw from Bobila. Knocked forward, it's gonna be a knock on. Advantage being played for the United States. Lopetti, Wilson, quickly to Nate Augsburger, who will chip and try and get past the fullback, Calvin Gorg. He was deep enough to grab that. Wheels to his left, looking for space, and he'll wheel around and get it into an opening. Gorg looking for support, throws it inside to nobody in particular and the United States takes it back. Augsburger, Fawcett, quick offload to Helu. Chipped by Cardi, perfectly placed to Dyer. Dyer running inside, being left alone again, lays it back, gets support in the ruck. Now the United States with its first real possession in the offensive half. McCarty being driven back by Albine Placine. United States still with it. Augsburger, cut pass, gets out of Helu's hands. Backwards, so that's okay, but they're gonna say it was a knock-on As Luke Rogan says nope that was knocked forward first one of my favorite things about rugby and there are many Is that you can hear the ref the whole time? Can we do this in the NBA and NFL and MLB? Can you imagine the conversations not all kid-friendly? Uh, yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't know how I don't know how similar those conversations would be but as a player I can tell you it's really nice to have a referee that talks to you. But how about that flick pass from Dylan Fawcett to set this up and then that chip through from Luke Cardi. Christian Dyer again finding himself with green space in front of him. Black jerseys on scene. A nice job there by Cardi though. Last time he was a little bit late to the scene. He threw that outside ball to Dyer. Dyer got isolated. That time he makes up for it. Gets good support in. But the Eagles couldn't string those last phases together and turn the ball over. Luke Cardi, number 10, playing fly half. And the Chicago Hounds, who are tied for the most players in MLR Boy. represented today with the local side, Utah Warriors. So reset yeah. the scrum. Okay. And what's nice is yeah. you're not the only eagle on the broadcast. The Ashley Solomon was a 15s forward, and hold. 7 okay. scrum half as well and has some insight from Greg Peterson, Ashley. Next one, I'm working. Thanks, thanks. That is correct, Jerem. I spoke to Greg earlier in the week. He said he feels like this team should be at the World Cup, but that being said, the team morale is still high. Their theme on this home soil tour is to bring it home. They missed too many opportunities in that buildup, but they aren't going to make the same mistakes tonight. They feel prepped and excited, so I am pumped to see what this Eagles team can bring. It is a home soil game, which is rare. And the United States is eating this up against a talented team like Stad to Luzon. Here's Joshua Brennan. Picked up quickly, advanced, tail into Mac. Trying to get rid of the ball. USA trying to hold him up. Let it go. Luke Rogan saying, let it go. Retier sometimes plays winger tonight, playing scrum half. Good clear out by Toulouse. Hiked between the legs to Alvin Placine. Still not inside the 22. The United States has done a good job of at least keeping Toulouse out. Yep. And holding on, called against Toulouse. Nice job by the Eagles defense that time. Just getting good, good body position over top of the ball. Nice, strong, and just really clean. Toulouse that time, I think that they weren't even expecting themselves to get that hike pass out. Got themselves a bit isolated. We saw the Eagles happen to them a little bit earlier. And that time, Toulouse finding themselves isolated and a great, great penalty kick that time from Luke Cardi puts them into Toulouse territory for the first time this afternoon. How about Cardi faking the near side, going blindside? You don't see that too much. Trying to catch Toulouse off guard, kicks into touch because of the penalty. The United States gets the line out and a great platform here outside the 22. Dylan Fawcett's first line out. I asked him about his nickname, The Butcher. He said in his Irish accent, Oh, Jeremy, you don't need to worry about that. Now I'm intrigued. McCarthy 
to Dyer. That ball skips off of Bryce Campbell and Toulouse with it and with numbers on the outside. Dalib with the chip. Mitch Wilson, Bailey's brother, as Ashley mentioned. The fullback caught from behind. United States with it, past Greg Peterson, and then knocked on by Nate Oxberger. Let's check in on the Silicon Slopes Come weather on. here in Santa Utah tonight. Pristine conditions, 78 Come degrees, on. whole fields in the shade. It's a beautiful night for rugby, Mike. This is as good as it gets as far as conditions go. What a fantastic venue. I mean, this stadium is great. It's hosted a couple of test matches for the Eagles in the past. It's a fast ground, and it is just a beautiful evening here. We'll see if in 2031, when the United States hosts the Men's World Cup and 33 the Women's, if this field could be one of them used. We take another look at the knock. I certainly hope so. And here's the Eagles there, just pulling that ball forward. But they had the advantage. You see our referee that time, Luke Rogan, with his arm out. Offsides, on to lose. But the Eagles now, they are now finally inside the 22 at the line out. The last time when it was on our near side of the field, it was just outside the 22. They shifted the ball to Dyer. And those are the situations the Eagles need to really be effective in this area of the field. They don't get down here much, so they got to make the best of it when they get here. The ball forms from Greg Peterson. Bodies on the floor, use it, says Luke Rogan. And in the tackle, that ball pops out. Knocked on by the United States, it was Pierre-Louis Barassi who does have some experience with the 15s and 7s with France with a big tackle. And both mistakes by the Eagles in this area of the field were just really speed of pass. I mean, that time, that's, that's Lopetti that's coming hard onto the ball, Bryce Campbell flipping it up to him. I mean, he's so tight there. That's just a rhythm thing, that's a timing thing. That was just way too tough to handle for Lopetti. And similarly, when Dyer went on that first one, he threw another rocket to his outside that wasn't handled. And so the Eagles just need to get that rhythm right. They need to get that timing down. And again, just that speed of pass. When you're going into contact, it's got to be something that he can handle as he goes in. There's several players in Europe playing with the club teams, paused for the World Cup, but not released to play for the U.S. or injured. A.J. McGinty, Ruben De Haas, Patty Ryan. Tommaso Boni, Joe Taufete, Chris Matina, Mika Cruse, Ina Futi, Cam Dolan originally were in camp, but uh, sick or injured. And so there are a number of guys who would have been playing in this game if this was a test match. But tonight it's the MLR All-Star team essentially. Paul Cost, Korg to the left winger, Luka Tozan, burrowing his way near midfield, Nate Augsburger on the tackle. This one gets past Leo Banos. Borg's going to kick it into space. Nobody there. This is one going to stay in and then finally trickles out. Great USA running. He was a little bit lucky that time. They had a, a breakdown in their back three pendulum and left a lot of space in that corner. Not a great balance for Toulouse, but you can see the intent that they have From inside their 22. They're having a go. They're spinning that ball out wide, and they've got some real gas on the outside, and they're not afraid to use it, especially in these opening 11 minutes for them to throw something like that. You can see what they want to do here tonight. Fawcett, the throw to Biliami Helu. Augsburg, what a great season he had with the San Diego Legion. MLR runners up. Quick ball from McCarthy, Cardi, Mitch Wilson. Turnover's good, lost forward. Ball spills out. Just a lost forward. Turnover was good and then he's lost the forward. Knock on. No issue here. For the U.S., knocked on by Toulouse. Certainly uh, the French side watching what's going on back home. A tremendous match in the opener for France in the World Cup in That's France eight, against eight, the All Blacks. A 27-13 win and then yesterday an entertaining 27-12 win for France. Off to a hot start. Certainly one of the favorites to win the tournament on home soil. They've never won it. This would be a big deal in France. It definitely would be. And I'll tell you what, that 2007 World Cup in France was something special. That was an amazing tournament. The French really know how to host the tournament. And uh, they would be really out in, out in numbers rooting for the Frenchies to bring home that World Cup and lift the Webb Ellis Trophy. you got the best player in the world, Anton, Anton Dupont, leading the side at nine, who, like you said, could have been here with Tozan, but he's a little busy. He's a little busy, is right. What was it like playing in that World Cup in France? I was pretty sensational. I mean, to be honest, though, I, I, I sat the bench most of it. It was, my, you a good view? it was my first time. It was, you know, my first experience actually with the Eagles. I made my debut, my first cap against the Springboks in the last game. And I remember sitting there. Our first one was against England. 
and they were just coming off having won in 2003, and it was just all surreal. I mean, Crouch. France in general, beautiful country, and they really Five. know how to host the World Cup. So far, so Six. good. Give us more of those scores coming up a bit later. Toulouse pushing the U.S. back here. Dyer. Gets through the tackle. U.S. quick, Luke White. And those Chicago Hounds. Lopetti offloads to Mitch Wilson. Augsburger steps inside, gets about 10 meters inside the 22 now for the United States. Scoreless into the 14th minute. And the U.S. put one on the board. McCarthy, real quick ball. Trying to avoid being tackled. Good counter ruck by Placine. This is Jake Turnbull, the loose head prop from the Seattle Seawolves. Oh, look at that, just running through. It's Clément Verger. Backwards, jumped into it, backwards. And the advantage is for Toulouse, so the U.S. does not come up with any points in the 22 trip. U.S. gets it back, though. Yeah, they'll retain the ball there. And you can see, though, off set piece, the intent from the U.S., just three really quick, very direct phases. That's the second time they've done that. They're making good headway when they do it. If they can recycle that ball quickly, beat Tolo's on around the corner. Like I said, they're coming out with a lot of energy, a lot of firepower, very direct, Let's go. good set piece sequence that time. But Nick McCarthy's just getting hustled at the back of these rucks. It's happened to him a few times. Lots of pressure from this Tolazan side. That'll have to be a point from head coach Scott Lawrence at halftime. He's going to have to tell his players, look, we're making some good things happen, but it's falling apart because we're not protecting McCarthy at the back of these rucks. We've got to do a better job of getting clean ball at the back so we can keep playing ball. This could be characterized in terms of styles of power for the U.S. versus the flare and speed of Toulouse. And a short arm penalty for the U.S. They'll tap and go. Luke White. McCarthy. Hello. McCarthy looks to his left. Luke Cardi. MLR champ with LA Giltinis now with the Chicago Hounds. Who's Greg Peterson? Currently unattached. Available to be signed. Balls out. Retier has it as the U.S. turns it over. And now the U.S. takes it back again. Toulouse able to get the ball back, but the U.S. has earned it back again multiple times outside the 22. Yeah, so a good steal that time by Toulouse The Eagles again giving up a few too many turnovers. And again, just letting Nick McCarthy get hustled around this breakdown. Got to be a point of conversation for head coach Scott Lawrence. Well, let's take a look at this replay here. You see Peterson come around the corner, rumble through. And then again, really good body position that time. That's a scrum half getting in there. There's only one white jersey on scene. You cannot let a scrum half steal your ball like that on the 22. That you is would definitely never. not okay. You no, would that never. is definitely right, not okay if you're the USA let's Eagles. Go. But they do a good job of swallowing them up right away. A couple big bodies on scene, force that mall, and turn the ball back over immediately for another set piece. Right here, it's a tough cookie. Uh, he's, he's a guy that's 5'5", five, five, but 176. He is in there. Listen, I'm not, I'm not giving him any discredit or disrespect. I'm not saying he, he shouldn't have stole that ball. What I'm saying is the Eagles cannot let him get in there and steal the ball. That is not something you want to have happen. Somebody 5'5", five, five, 170, stealing it from you inside your 22 when you're knocking in scoring position. You can't do that. As a former scrum half, Ashley Sullivan would not Come either, on, right, Ashley? No, I would not. And another former scrum half oh, now playing wing, Nate Osberger. I spoke to him earlier in the match, or earlier in the week, too, on this new hairdo. He's rocking with a couple Five. of other players. He said they had a spontaneous team Six. hair bleaching oh, session, and it cracked a lot of laughs. And without their wife's and girlfriend's help, this half bleach look is as good as it gets. They brought black dye to dye it back if it went bad, and they just, they decided to stick to it. It is what it is at this point, and they are hoping it gives them a little extra juice tonight. It is what it is. It's exactly right. Good stuff, Ashley. Here's Oxberger weaving his way through the Toulouse defense. Offloading to Greg Peterson, El Capitan. He loses the ball, but it's backwards. Can't lose it forward. Here's Dyer on the wing. Dyer running over the fullback, Calvin Gorg of Toulouse in the U.S. Knocking on the door here. 
Bryce Campbell. El Capitan. U.S. With the counter ruck. The ruck rather. Here's Helu inside the 22 now for the U.S. Can they hold on to the ball and get some territory? Yeah. Straight in off your feet. And a penalty against the U.S. off their feet in the ruck. And the U.S. just being their own worst enemy. But Christian Dyer, get off the bus. It's full. He just on train tracks down that outside channel. He's having himself a day. Lots of space in front of him. That time, though, sees a black jersey just run straight through him. But the U.S., again, they're stringing some things together. They're getting quick ball. But, again, just coming off their feet that time. That's the discipline. Those are those little nuances that they need to get right. Those speed of pass things like we saw earlier on, making sure they get support there. And in those situations, stay on your feet because they've been around that 22, but they haven't been able to capitalize because of a lot of their own errors. So far, the United States outplaying Toulouse, but no points to show for it. In the 20th minute, hydration break coming up in a minute or two here. Gun Bobila, here's Billy Searle from England. Pierre-Louis Barassi, driven back by Bryce Campbell and company. Paul Cost. Good effort there by Lopetti in the counter ruck. That ball knocked on by Toulouse. Bailey Wilson with it, U.S. with the advantage. He's got a bit of no advantage from the lost forward. So it'll be a scrum for the United States from the knock on. Good defense from the Eagles that time. That was one thing that head coach Scott Lawrence talked about. They really needed to tidy that part of their game up. In that summer series, they let themselves down a few times. But again, just putting pressure on that Toulouse on side. They might not have knocked into him and jarred that ball loose. But their presence and their line speed to get in their face at least makes them hesitate in that line of fire. We'll step aside. It's a water break for the players, for you, and for us. We'll be back in a moment from Sandy, Utah. Scoreless draw between the United States and Stade Toulouson. We'll be back in a moment on Fox Sports. For Warriors Nation, wearing. In front of their face, and you've seen even me look around the stadium, right? There's lots of kids. We saw them on the broadcast. They're, those are the kids that have a lot to look forward to, the boys and the girls. We host them both World Cups. Absolutely. Good fake from McCarthy to not hit Luke Rogan, the ref. They would have just re-scrummed at that point. Bryce Campbell goes to ground. Lopetti was falling out of bounds. Still scoreless. 20th minute. And McCarthy continues to get eaten up as this ball goes down the wing. Rentier getting past a man. Offloads. Dalib inside the 22. Spinning, turning. Lays it back. One man ruck. Joshua Brennan. Placine. Billy Searle with this kick wide open on this left side caught by Tozan and down for the first score of the game 20 minutes in for Stade Tolozon and I think the phrase you used was French flair earlier in this game and how about that that's about as flary as it gets that was just a lot of hard work done at midfield at that breakdown again like you said put that pressure on Nick McCarthy at the back of the breakdown turn the ball over couple of fancy passes and then how about that cross field kick it started way upfield and it ends with this the Eagles just too tight they leave one of their wingers on the outside that's 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 uh, that's Tozan like you said just wide open on the outside Dyer was pinched in way too close trying to blitz off his line to prevent the pass from coming out and then Tozan just goes right over the top and that's what a 22 time French League champion and a five time European champion can do to you off turnover ball Romain Entomac, Teo's brother, would be the starting fly half. And then it was Batiste German. He broke his elbow in game two of top 14 a couple of weeks ago. He's out two months. So Billy Searle, the Englishman, is the fly half. And he'll kick the conversion. This is worth two points. And you kick it straight out from where it was scored. And it is through for two. 7 nothing to loose. We were just talking at the hydration break about when this game was going to open up and how long we would be scoreless for. And, and you totally all, said in like 90 yeah, yeah. seconds. <laughs> we all kind of agreed. I don't know if I said 90 seconds. <laughs> in fairness, I said it was going to take a couple minutes, but I said something's brewing. One of these teams is going to break open pretty soon. I had a feeling it was going to be to lose, but the Eagles, again, they brought a lot of energy out of the gates. They've just got to sustain that now. Can't go in a hole, even though they've given up a big try. They've got to rebound. A couple's two, right? <laughs> to the second minute from when you said that? I, li I like that. Leo Banos. 
Gretzier, David Ainu'u, the USA Eagle, playing for Toulouse. Last man there, nope, no box kick, faked it. Searle, Cost, picks it up from his toes. Lopetti and Campbell with the tackle. Searle, near side to Gorg. Lopetti with the big tackle, Dyer there as well. Gretzier, near side. This is Clément Verger, the right lock. Many of these guys, including Verger, part of the U-20 team that won the 2021 hey, world title. A lot of young talent that we could see in the next couple of years in top 14. High box kick, Cardi immediately tackled by Intimac. McCarthy, Mitch Wilson of the New England Free Jacks. What a year they had. MLR champions. For the San Diego Legion. McCarthy saying this isn't clean ball. Use it now, please. Peterson will attach. McCarthy with the kick. This is free for anybody. Flying in goes Gorg. Tripped up by Luke White. Retier, other side to Bobila. Bobila driven back. A straight sprint. From Berger, Retier wants a piece. Brought down by Fawcett and McCarthy. Now in plus territory. Leo Banos on loan to Toulouse during the World Cup. In France, they call it a World Cup Joker. Come play for our team. We need you because we got a bunch of guys on the French national team. Loose ball, United States comes up with it. Nate Brakely, who's one of the only guys who kind of still has a full-time gig, data analyst with Compass in New York. Your neighbor is Luke White. Fending McCarthy. Chip to Dyer. And a knock on, gonna bring it back about some of these collisions in the past like 90 seconds and one of them from the micro machine Retier. i mean he just take he took on nick mccarthy that time and that was like a car wreck in the middle of the field he is boxing well above his weight but man there have been some big collisions and there's paul mullen just maybe just taking a little knee trying to give his his side a little breather not saying it's intentional you know but every now and then front row player has been known to Take a bit of a knee before a scrum. Let everybody catch their breath for a second. A certain college team I know, they'd have a signal, you know. <laughs> yeah, and, you and know. Then, and then two of two guys would go down. They're like, no, no, not two, just one of you. <laughs> Micro machine. I, I love it. I love it, man. I also had it when I was a kid. Yeah, he's, he's the first thing that came to mind. I mean, he, you gave his stats. I mean, he's not the biggest player on the field by any stretch, but he is certainly playing like it. Gets a turnover inside his own 22, steals the ball. That time just plows into his opposite nine. I mean, he, he said DuPont's not here, but he's helping to be that spark plug that Toulouse needs right now. And But I'll tell you what, 25 minutes into the game, only one try for the team in black. The Eagles are playing a lot of defense so far, but I don't know how many people, what they thought about this game and how the score was going to turn out, but so far it's been pretty exciting. I have a feeling the most exciting stuff is yet to come. I agree. USA scrum. McCarthy into Fawcett. They call that position the hooker because he hooks it back with his foot. Lopetti. Over to Mitch Wilson. Paul Cost brings him down. Tackle the roll. He's on the ball because you're there. Roll. When you tackle a guy, you got to roll away. That did not happen, so it's a penalty for the United States. And the goal here is to kick it out of bounds or into touch, as they say, as far as you can down the field, and then you get a line out. Good kick from Cardi. Great kick from Cardi. And to lose that time, giving the U.S. a bit of a get out of jail free card. Bail, uh, Mitch Wilson that time, excuse me, not his brother Bailey. Mitch Wilson was the one who took that ball into contact and again might have outran his support a little bit. There was some black jerseys on scene. Couldn't get the turnover to lose. But they made a bit of a mess of that breakdown situation. But our referee, Luke Rogan, not happy with that one. And a penalty to the U.S., but they can't come away with the line out cleanly. 
keep possession. Bailey Wilson, captain of the Utah Warriors here locally. First time in that USA jersey today. Not a capped game because it's not a test match between international teams, so caps will not be handed out, but certainly representing the United States. Awesome for these guys tonight. Knocked on after Luke White bobbled it forward. It'll be a scrum for Stade Toulouson, who have started the season. They played three games for the World Cup break. They went two and one. Lost to Bayonne, that was a surprise. Montpellier and the Oyonnax, they got a couple of wins. The United States played three games in August at Romania, got a win at Portugal, got a loss. That one hurt again, Portugal knocking the U.S. out of the World Cup last year and at Georgia lost as well. So the U.S. getting another shot at playing here in September, but on home soil as we check in with Ashley. Yes, guys, I chatted earlier with Alexander Romont. He was within the traveling team for Toulouse, not on the roster today. I was just asking about the World Cup feels for them. USA, obviously, you know, having a little bit of a downside not being there. But for some of these Toulouse players, they're pumped about it because their teammates are there um, playing on that world's biggest stage. He said these first couple big wins with France has given this Toulouse team an extra push. The French players and Toulouse have a very good relationship. So a win for France and a win for Toulouse is always celebrated on both sides. So in their hopes is to bring back Team France a big win as France has done for them. That's true. They can say, hey, we went one, you've won, let's go. There's a six-week World Cup break in top 14. They will play UBB Rugby on October 29th when they resume top 14 play. And to Mac. Hello. Just jumping on that loose ball out of the ruck. Toes on, into touch. Christian Dyer with a good tackle in the U.S. will take the line out. Two good confrontational physical plays. That was Helu off the scrum. And then Dyer on the outside. The USA just really getting physical in these one-on-one -on -one collisions. So there's that flick pass to the outside. Dyer looks like he's going to get stepped and drives his opposite out of bounds. Really nice job by Christian Dyer. But again, the tone was set off the set piece. That was Helu, like you mentioned, at the base of that scrum. Peterson reaches and grabs. Dyer in the middle of the pitch now. U.S. trying to tie this thing up after Luca Tozon in the 20th minute scored for Toulouse. Lopetti. Ball gets ripped out. Ripped out. So it's going forward. Yeah, it's ripped out, so it's going forward. It's a knock-on by ripping it forward and touching you last. Correct. Correct. Toulouse has been so quick in the rucks. That's given the United States a real problem here. It has, and here's that replay. There's that rip by number 12. Cost, as you said, just gets in there strong and pulls that ball free. But unfortunately, not a fumble, so not a free ball. If the U.S. had picked it up and was able to do something good with it, they had the advantage. That would have been great, but unfortunately couldn't. So we're coming back for a scrum to the Eagles. First sub in the game, Malachi Hawks. Backup hooker coming in for Jan Bobila. Hawks, age 20, Australian. Most of the team is from France. But David Ainu'u from the United States. There's a Spaniard. A of Kiwis, Australians. As that scrum comes down and the United States earns a penalty back. Fun to see one of the assistant coaches, the all-black great Jerome Kenu in the house. Among uh, the other notables here tonight. Yeah, for sure. But how about that penalty off the scrum for the U.S.? That was something that this past summer, they were kind of inconsistent in the summer series. It was a point that Scott Lawrence said he wanted to talk about set piece being a real good platform, both on offense and defense, to make a statement from. And that time, the front row, that tight five, we talked about all the experience between Dylan Fawcett, Paul Mullen, Nate Brakely, Greg Peterson, over 100 caps between that group. That's them doing work up front with the newcomer, Jake Turnbull, wearing number one. And they put that Toulouse on side under a lot of pressure, and this puts them in the best position they've had all night. 15 meters away, can the U.S. tie this thing up? Greg Peterson calling for it. Helu goes up, free bouncing ball, gathered in by Luke Carty in front of the left post, about 15 meters away. Nate Brakely to ground. McCarthy, Dylan Fawcett, driven back by Hawks. McCarthy calls his own number, Augsburger. To Lopetti, Lopetti getting pushed forward within three meters. United States right there. The bind with the forwards pushing to within four. 
McCarthy inside ball to Peterson. Spins. U.S. on this far right side. Half an hour in. Offside against Toulouse. To U.S. that time, all hands on deck. They had all 15 of their players between that five meter line and the near post. Luke White was their furthest player away from the breakdown and he was standing at that post. You could see how hungry they are. They wanted numbers on scene. Here's a replay of that penalty. Good leg drive from Lopetti to set this all up and it comes back for penalty against Toulouse for offside. And again, we said before, that was the best field position they had all night. This time they're even closer. They couldn't bring that line out down. Dylan Fawcett has scored so many tries in the MLR up on wall. He'll want to make sure this one goes to hand, and it does. Let's see if he can get another one in. Fawcett at the back, number two. They're going to try and give him the ball. U.S. with the ball. Good work. Within about a meter. Pushing forward. Ball collapses, and Toulouse takes it back. The U.S. did not use the mall successfully, and Toulouse takes it away inside the five. Yeah, they do. The throw was great from Fawcett, so they got that part of it right. But this time, they're in good body position there. They're nice and tight. They're driving together. We sometimes see some backs get on scene. I'm a little surprised we didn't see the likes of Lopetti or Campbell join that time. We saw it in the summer series that some of the backs put some body weight in there. They might have been able to use it in that situation. But Toulouse just swallows that ball up, doesn't let it come out, and forces a turnover. So a really good defensive stand that time. And another missed opportunity for the Eagles in scoring opportunity inside the 22. I've had several opportunities, like you said, inside the red zone, if you will. Mullen, Fawcett, and company. Well, Hellu and, and uh, Mullen were five meters into the dry zone almost. Scrum for Toulouse. We'll get a good look at it here. The middle player in the front will hook it back with his foot. That is, if the scrum stay, stays up, it does not. You've slipped out as well, so we're going to reset. David Ainu'u, number three, on the front left there. United States player playing for Toulouse tonight. Didn't have a choice. It's not a release your guys situation. So he knows all these guys. He's practiced with all these guys. And Ainu'u went to ground, so did the U.S. And so they reset. Great shot that time from our camera crew. But you can see in here some of those front row players just losing their footing. We talked about how fast this track is. That grass is real short. It's an MLS type stadium. And sometimes for the forwards, they have a hard time just getting their studs in the ground and getting some traction in these front row positions. Home of Rail Salt Lake here in Sandy, Utah. Out of the back, tail into Mac. Let it come now, let it come. Retier. Clearance kick from Billy Searle. This will be a line out for the U.S. to try and alleviate some pressure from Toulouse. For the most part, the United States has had more 22 looks, but it is 7-0 Toulouse. They have absolutely had all the field position this game. I feel like I'm getting a stiff neck from constantly looking to the right <laughs> of this booth as I look into this end of the field because they've really been camped out here for the better part of almost 20-something minutes. But like you said, no points to show for it. So Toulouse showing good discipline, not giving Cardi a chance to put any points on the board off the tee. And the U.S., though, like we said, sometimes just their own worst enemy. The little nuances of speed of pass, missed line out throws, those sorts of things they have to execute in this part of the field in these games. Greg Peterson, six foot eight at the top of that line out. Bryce Campbell. McCarthy over to Peterson. Ball spills out. Cardi over to Luke White. And Luke's connecting. Look at Luke White gets some meters. Paul Mullen, one of those five Utah Warriors. Originally from Ireland, a small island there. Mitch Wilson. Augsburger just hands it back, just palms the ball. And then Cardi tosses it forward. But there was an advantage being played for the United States. Discipline down here. David, discipline down here, please. So there we go. You heard our referee say discipline this time. That's Cardi dropping the ball forward. Got a little bit too excited because he had the advantage. He wanted to try to swing it out wide, wide but he turned to his right, so a bunch of black jerseys. The U.S. gets the penalty. It's a bit of a weird angle that time for Luke Cardi from that far touch line. So they continue to keep pressure on. They go for the line out, and again, they're five meters out. Another opportunity. They just saw one earlier. Toulouse stopped them on that mall. We'll see if Dylan Fawcett can get this one to hand and try to dot one down for the Eagles because you know they're going to maul from here. 
Line out from five meters with five minutes left as this one goes over the line out and the U.S. spill it again. Malachi Hawks, Retier, no one home. And that one straight into touch. U.S. line out at the spot. So another 22 look and another donut for the U.S. And again, they had the pressure on in terms of field position, but they really weren't putting pressure on in the actual game sequence. They're not bringing that ball down. They're not really testing this to lose side. To lose that time, you can see they're throwing pods up. They're going up and competing at the line out because the U.S. has been inconsistent in that area. So they're really not giving them any free throws. They're not staying down to try to stop them all. They're going up to put pressure on these throws. Boss at age 33, part of that 2019 World Cup. Williami Helu. Nate Oxberger with the step. Cardi, Wilson, Lopetti. Fullback Mitch Wilson in there in the ruck. Peterson over to Mullen. That grab by Jake Turnbull comes back to where everybody was. Wilson, good line speed from Pierre Louis Barassi. And stop Toulouson, one of the best clubs in the world, as we mentioned. 22 time top 14 champs, five time European Cup champions. No one's done it more than Toulouse. Last year won France, semi finalists in Europe. No, no, no. The Eagles right now about five meters back from where they started. So you see Cardi drop into the pocket. Oh, well, but here he goes. See some space, Mitch Wilson. For a moment there was McCarthy right at Billy Searle. Searle chips, not much of a chase. Into touch outside the 22, so this will come back to where he kicked it. If you're inside your 22 and you kick on the full into touch, meaning in the air out of bounds, you're good. But if you're outside the 22 and it goes out of bounds, you bring it back to where it was kicked. And it was a great scramble that time from Searle to cover that space. I mean, Nick McCarthy looked up. We saw him do it in the summer series. Just put that ball in the corner, just painting corners so well with his kicks. But that time, Searle on the scene doesn't get his foot on it, though, well enough. And it comes way back to where he kicked it from. So the U.S., again, still with the territory advantage right now inside of Toulouse half, but just outside the 22. So Nick McCarthy's back from this line out right now. You'd expect maybe Bailey Wilson might fake them all here, pop himself back out, and have a go around the corner with the likes of Christian Dyer. We'll see what they come up with. Nate Brakely on the take. Ball for the U.S. See in the last couple of moments in the first half here of 40 minutes, the U.S. can generate some offense. Spilled again by Dyer. Knock on advantage for Toulouse. Dimitri Delib. Being held up, tries to pass it backwards. Lost forward by the United States. Advantage was being played. They'll bring it back for the scrum. And again, another handling error from the Eagles that time. They go with the mall option. That's a pretty big mall from that, that far out. I would have expected them maybe to fake that mall, pull Bailey Wilson out, and then have a go through the midfield with the likes of Dyer and Campbell, just be very direct. But they suck in all those forwards. They still try to cut up into the midfield. And again, another handling error. I'm surprised that Toulouse didn't punch that ball downfield, though. There was so much green space in front of them. We've talked about how they've been camped out in this end for a long time. I'm really surprised they didn't kick that ball down and just move themselves upfield and really try to deflate this Eagles side as we start to close out this first half. It's not been a territory game via the kick. Been a lot of ball in hand in this one. Mostly for the United States, but Toulouse Broke out in the 20th minute Coach. with Luca Tozon for the try. Five. Conversion was good by Billy Searle, and that's where we stand 7 nothing with a minute and whatever's on Luke Rogan's watch left in the first half. Retier to his left. Searle. Barassi. Paul Cost offloaded and then chipped forward, knocked on. Advantage U.S. in this. Mitch Wilson. Taken by Luke White. Let's see what kind of support he gets. He's on it, no advantage. Cross forward. U.S. will keep it with the advantage. But Luke White taken down by Retier, and then he stops the play. He gets over top. Wood had a steal, but it comes back for the penalty. So here we go. Toulouse here trying to show some flair, but forcing that one. Two white jerseys. That's Campbell and Dyer that put enough pressure on him to force a bad pass, and that, and that would have been offload. 
And Luke White that time tried to rumble upfield, but he met the likes of Retier in front of him. Retier stopped him in his tracks and forced the scrum for the U.S. Retier, the spud web of French rugby, yeah, shall we say. I love that reference. That is a blast from the past. The U.S. right now off the scrum, very flat. I got a HIA coming in. Sorry. Off screen. They, they will assess a head injury. The TMO, television match official, can assess, hey, we think you may have had a head injury. You need to come have be looked at. And it's Pierre-Louis Barassi. He said 12, but Barassi is the man coming off who was 13. Sorry, fellas, it came in really late. Apologies. So that's something so they can someone? call down and have you pulled from the game and looked at. Player safety, first and foremost, Absolutely. right? So I think that that's a really important part of this game because if it were up to them, they'd never step off the field. So you got to have somebody who's looking out for their best interest long term, from, from especially from the perspective of mental health like that. Simone Brenda comes in, age 23. D2 in France last year. One of the United States backup scrum halves actually played D2 in France. Michael Basca said, did you teach them some French? He said, just enough to talk some trash. Extra time of the first half. Brooks spills around. And it got I twisted. I didn't see it out the back. I apologize. The United States gains the advantage, but how much time is left on the clock here? Straight. That was a great pick from the back. Sorry, mate. I didn't see you go. That's two scrum penalties for the Eagles, though. One earlier on on the far side of the field and then one here. So that's that's a notch they can put in their belt as far as one up they've had on Toulouse in this half for sure. They've had a lot of territory, but they've gotten themselves two scrum penalties. So a big statement from this Eagles pack as they get one last opportunity to launch off this set piece. Dylan Fawcett there checking in with some of his other forwards to get this one right because this is the last hurrah in this first half. Another one of the great things about rugby, that ball's coming into the stands 30 times. Be ready. Fortunately, you don't get to keep it. Dyer. Just outside the 22 for the U.S. Down 7 0. Dylan Fawcett. McCarthy. McCarty. Lopetti. Of the Seattle Seawolves. One of the great young players in Major League Rugby. Paul Mullen. Bound with Brakeley and Fawcett. Backwards, Bryce Campbell. They'll, they'll play as long as the U.S. maintains possession, but now it's knocked on, and Toulouse has it, and that will probably do it, and it does for the first half of rugby here in Sandy, Utah. What a first half we had. What are your thoughts, Mike? Yeah, if you're the U.S., you're going into this half, you're looking at lots of territory, not enough points on the board. You have to get the execution numbers up. You have to get those handling errors down. And most importantly, like we said, Nick McCarthy needs clean ball at the back of these breakdowns so we can start to launch some attack. Ashley Sullivan is on the pitch with the United States captain, Greg Peterson. Greg, can I get your thoughts on the Eagles' performance that first half? It's been good. We just... And then there are seven others uh, scattered throughout New Zealand, Argentina, England, Australia, Tonga, Italy. We've got a lot of talent missing, but the group that is here, several starters, several backups, and a lot of the young guys that will factor into the future of this club. So this is a very talented matchup of girls. Oh yeah, it is. Talk about an all-star team. Those names and those countries that they played for that you mentioned for Toulouse, I mean, that's as all-star as it gets. But you're right. It's like bringing the Warriors overseas. It's like bring in one of America's best somewhere else. And we are very lucky and very fortunate to host them here, albeit that they have their top players or not, because this is what makes our players better. We talked about how some of the Eagles players, although MLL All-Stars in their own right and have played some fantastic rugby, these are the games that make you better. You play against the world's best, that's how you improve. You go back and watch the film, and this will pay dividends for them down the line as they prepare for the upcoming World Cup in five years' time. The head coach, of the USA Eagles, Scott Lawrence. He's only under contract for a few more weeks, so certainly a good performance here could factor into what his future may look like here or otherwise, so that's at stake. Ugo Mola's on a six-week break with his Toulouse team. He's looking at guys that may factor into top 14 when they resume. And here we go, the second half is underway. Banos 
knocks it on. So the U.S. is going to have a scrum in a good spot here to start the second half. And they're starting right where they ended, back in good field position with a set piece. They said You said that they had two good set piece penalties for them in the first half. A great platform to launch from. You see Nick McCarthy out there talking to Luke Cardi, trying to get this one right because this is a great opportunity in the opening minute of this second half to come out of the gates firing and really make a statement against this Toulouse side. Nick McCarthy still in there at scrum half. You see Nate Augsburger is standing directly behind the scrum, so right in. There he is right there on our screen now. Nate Augsburger staying inside. All the backs lined up to the right-hand side of the scrum. So look for Nate to get involved, but they won't need it. Free kick. Changes to a penalty. That's the third one now at set piece. That's the power of the United States doing a nice job in the scrum. And they originally wanted to tap and go, but they'll take the kick here. They didn't even have to engage. Our referee, Luke Rogan, wasn't happy with the setup from Toulouse and so <laughs> penalized them. And so then here we go. We talk about talk about field position and territory and opportunity. Five meters out, 90 seconds into this, this second half. This is as good as it gets for the U.S. You need this score. We talked about the execution needs to get up. Dylan Fawcett here is going to check in with Jake Turnbull. They got to pull this one down. They got to put some points on the board right now. Normally, these guys are going head to head in Major League Rugby. They are together tonight. New York Ironworkers, Seattle Seawolves. This is an overthrow again. The lineup's been tough, but it's perfectly placed to Bryce Campbell for the try. Just like they drew it up, Mike. Just like they drew it up is right. They might not have gotten the line out cleanly, but Bryce Campbell on scene rolls straight into his hands. And that's Bryce Campbell and the impact he has on this team. Just hustle all the way through. You see him here just hustling forward. Slices through a couple of black jerseys and then just falls over the line. I think he surprised himself there. You can see it in his eyes. Oh, man, that's that's Retier. I think that might have missed that one for Toulouse. It was coming forward to scoop that one up. So right place at the right time, Bryce Campbell. And hey, a little bit of luck gets the U.S. on the board right back in this game. And Cardi with a chip shot. And we're back locked at seven. The kick is good. 7-7 seven, seven the score. Conversion by Luke Carty. And the U.S. has tied this thing up. What a welcome back for Bryce Campbell, who missed, injured the August test matches in Europe. Former captain of the Eagles. Johnny on the spot to tie this thing up. Just two minutes into the second half. Hello inside the 22 on the take off the restart in the United States. Tied with Stad Toluzon. And that's, and that's just one of those things where so many things we talked about had gone wrong for the Eagles in that first half as far as errors and discipline and everything else. But that one, everything went right. They might have gotten the overthrow. But again, Bryce Campbell, Johnny on the spot, and darts that one in for him. McCarthy with the kick. Calvin Gorg, the fullback. Check that. Teo Entomac, the eight-man. And the United States wins it. Holding on. Called against Toulouse. Well, Ashley, talk to the coaches at halftime. What'd you learn, Ashley? Yeah, I got a chat with assistant coach Jerome Kano from Toulouse, and he said overall he's happy with their squad, but they just need to get more points on the board. Their discipline was letting them down, so that first try is going to get him a little bit heated. But overall, he said in that first half, they were happy with their defense. So Toulouse lacking a little bit from their halftime thoughts. And then Scott Lawrence obviously is going to be happy with his team so far. He was pretty short and sweet, and he said we need to convert opportunities as they just did. He said that will happen if they can hold on to the ball, be direct, and play fast. Good stuff, Ashley. We appreciate it. The great... All black drum piano in the house. The United States trying to get this thing done on home soil. We're tied at seven after the Campbell try. Cardi, dangerous pass. But advantage was being played. Retier. Placine's going to come over. Another look. Lots of penalties down here. Yeah. Okay, have a word. Next one will go to the bin. Yeah, okay. What's okay. The In the side. Swimming up the side. Oh. Next one's going to go to the bin. Have a word. Luke Rogan saying, Albin Placine, talk to your team. Thank Lots you. of penalties. Next one, Four you'll get a yellow card. Entry. Referencing the Sid bin. So it's a penalty for the U.S. trying to take the lead. Chuckle. And they will kick for three and try and 
take advantage of this penalty here and take the lead. And this is definitely the right call. I mean, to put 10 points up on Toulouse five minutes into the second half. This is a dream start for the Eagles in the opening minutes as they come out of the locker room because this Toulouse side is just ill-disciplined at the start of the half, giving the Eagles these opportunities, keeping them in their own end, giving them these scoring opportunities. And Luke Cardi has a chance to put the USA ahead for the first time tonight. Luke Carter gives the Eagles the lead by three. Dream start, as you said, to the second half. Absolutely is. You can see the fans are loving it. They're starting to come alive. They're on their feet 40 minutes into the game. Not much scoring done in that first half, but 10 points to show for it. Just six minutes in. That's a big start for this USA side. Hello again on the take. The U.S. has the advantage, 10 points in the first six minutes of the second half. Toulouse has got it back. And inside the 22, dangerous position for the French champs. Cost Searle, he had the cross kick if he wanted it, but Searle will take it himself. Within 15 meters, Grubber through. And Toulouse dots it down. What a play, and it's toes on again. Five for Toulouse. Tozan gets his second of the match. And Toulouse has really had no possession, no territory, but two tries to show for it. And this is just how they can really execute. And look at that, just dribbles it through. Nobody home for the USA. Two black jerseys on scene. And Tozan that time just hustles onto scene and just gets himself on top of that ball to touch it down for it to lose. And again, that's just how good they are. Not a lot of possession, not a lot of territory, but when they have it, they make it count. The Eagles could take a lesson from that as they move forward into the future. Counter-attacking rugby, if you will. And uh, if you're used to watching football, you haven't watched rugby too much, you're like, wait, why is that a score? You just have to put any amount of pressure with possession on the ball, which is what Tozon did. Billy Searle, the lefty, from deep for the conversion, and it's good. 14-10, you can hear the French fans in the stands. It's not Toulouse on at 14-10. A short-lived lead that time for the USA. I don't even know if that was two minutes long as far as that they were on, <laughs> on the scoreboard before Toulouse kind of came awake and just punched right back. But again, that's just the class that they have in this organization. It's just if you give them a sniff and you give them a chance, they're going to capitalize. On the restart. Bobbled forward and then caught by Bailey Wilson. Bailey from Australia moved to Utah as a kid. This is his Eagles debut in his home state as that one's knocked on by Banos and a restart scrum. Again, in great position for the United States just outside the 22. Restarts have been an issue for both teams that led two tries. Yeah, they have been, and so this is one of those situations where Toulouse does something well, then they come off that kickoff, and they give the ball right back to the U.S. McCarthy there, trying to switch back inside. That was on. You could see that Toulouse defender was pulling across the ruck. If McCarthy was able to get that ball away, I didn't quite see who that runner was for the USA, but they were going to sneak right in through that gap. McCarthy dragged them way across the field, but that swing arm tackle came through from the Toulouse defender and knocked the ball loose. But the USA luckily had the advantage, so they're coming back for a scrum with Augsburger again lined up right behind Luke White in the pocket. All the backs lined up to the right. They're very flat, though, in the midfield. Luke Cardi, Bryce Campbell, Tavite Lopetti, very flat to that right-hand side. Mitch Wilson, the only one deep in that line to bring some pace in from the outside. New props for the United States. Turnbull and Mullen out. Sylvia and Takaji Young Yen in. Young Yen a year ago, hadn't even played for the Utah Warriors. Now he is in the second game with USA. Mitch Wilson inside the 22. Not a ton of support there. McCarthy over to Luke White as the United States tries to take it back. Someone told him at halftime, hey, we need more offense. And both teams have acquiesced that request. Greg Peterson 
10 meters away. Takaji Young Yen, one of those five Utah Warriors here. McCarthy of the Chicago Hounds. There's Luke Carty, also a hound. They did a great job hosting Major League Rugby's final, by the way. Shaq was a DJ there. It was amazing. Dropkick Murphys as well. It was a party. To the right side, DJ Diesel was in the house. Nate Sylvia of San Diego Legion, still on his feet. U.S. take the lead back here. Lopetti, Joel Merkler, Spanish international in the mix on defense. Dyer pushes over his man and then turns it over. Knocked it on, but offside the call and a yellow card given to Artur Retier. Micro Machines is going to sit for 10 on the yellow card. Too many. Penalties, especially inside the 10 and 15 meters away, and Luke Rogan has handed the yellow. He warned them, and now they're out. He did warn them, but how about this set piece from the U.S.? This is about as basic as it gets. We talked about how flat they were, but they run that play out the back to Luke Cardi, and there's and there's Mitch Wilson putting some pace onto it. They get some good gain line on the outside. It's just enough to sneak in behind this to lose defense, and what it does is it puts the lose on the back foot, and that's what earns them that penalty and that yellow card. Overthrow again, and then the dive and dive. Takaji Young Yen. The U.S. takes it back. The local Utah Warrior kid, age 25, who a year ago didn't even have a cap in MLR, has now scored for the United States. How about that? Scoring on your second game for the USA. And again, this doesn't go according to plan. It goes over the pod that they were intended to throw to, but straight into the hands of Young Yen. Right place at the right time. That's Peterson trying to get his paws up in the air. But we saw Bryce Campbell dot down earlier from it. And that time, Young Yen on the scene. Right place, right time. Johnny on the spot, I think, was the phrase that you used. And the Eagles right now just being opportunistic. When things are not going according to plan, they are reacting and they're scoring points as a result of it. I asked Takaji, what's the last year been like? He's like, well, I moved up here from New Zealand because I had some family here. They said, hey, will you play in this thing called the Crossroads Cup? Utah Warriors said, hey, you're pretty good. Why don't you come in? He played twice for the Warriors, and the U.S. was like, we like what we see. Played once in the European tour, and now he has scored for the United States in the state where he now resides. What a story for Takaji Young Yen out of New Zealand. The young USA Eagle, Cardi. The crowd tells you the answer there. It is good, 17-14. And in the first 12 and a half minutes of the second half, the offense has awoken for both teams. It really has. And we talked about a key to the game earlier on being work great for the U.S. We're now 50 minutes in. One of the things we saw from the summer series was they started to run out of gas around the 60-minute mark. So they've got 30 minutes left in this game to really empty the tank. One thing Scott Lawrence said about this week was they got some of the best numbers they had on those GPS trackers as far as intensity and training goes. He knew that they were going to be able to go to the distance and go that full 80. So let's see what they've got for these remaining 30 minutes of this game. You used to be able to have fake hustle. Now they can quantify how hard you're working. It is a different era, Mike. There is no hiding. There is no <laughs> hiding. <laughs> McCarthy with the box kick. This is Gord, the fullback. The United States up 17-14. Both teams have answered the other's tries. This is Matisse Castro Ferreira and knocked on by Toulouse. A comedy of errors as the United States tries to add to its lead. Let's check in with Ashley on Scott Lawrence, USA head coach. Hey guys, I talked to a whole bunch of the Eagles players this week and I asked them all, what was it like playing underneath interim head coach Scott Lawrence as he was a USA Eagle? All of their answers encompassed the same thing. They told me Scott epitomizes what it means to be an Eagle. He is uncompromised in what he wants and the team is on board with that. They say that his passion bleeds through this team and the jersey, and they want so badly to give back to him what he has given to this game, this country, and the boys this week on this home soil tour. Ashley, I absolutely love that. I mean, I've had a lot of conversations with Scott Lawrence these past few weeks, played with him way back in the day. But one thing that I love that Scott's doing is he's giving this team an identity. He's bringing in former Eagles. He's bringing in people into the fold, letting them come into Jersey presentations, letting them spend time with the team. He's trying to build a network and build a foundation that is going to be 
important for success long term for this organization. I think he's done a fantastic job. They may have gone one and two in the summer series, but again, this is a marathon, not a sprint. The, the boys on the team are really behind him. I'm a fan of Scott, Scott Lawrence and what he's doing. And I think, Ashley, you said it best. The respect is there, and he's building something special. It would be awesome to see him continue with this team over the next couple of years. But regardless of what happens, Scott's done a fabulous job. This is Kelvin Gorg, the fullback who got hurt here. Oh, gets bent backwards. I just checked on him, but he is coming out. And that's the one thing you don't want to see. You go on the tour, this is an exhibition. You don't have, want to have any major injuries that would set you back later. But uh, Gorg will exit this game. In for him, Kakeru Okumura, a World Cup joker from Japan. U.S. up here, Lopetti, Mitch Wilson, over to Lopetti, and then throws it out. He thought Dyer was on his hip. He was not. Paul Cost grabbing that ball. You can throw a line out in quick, backwards. You can even throw it into yourself, which is a fun rule. It'll be a line out for Toulouse. What changed for the United States other than a lucky bounce here or there in the second half? Mike? I think the energy is just there. You saw the confidence from Greg Peterson in that interview that he did with Ashley just before halftime. You know, they had all the territory, all the field position, all the possession, but he still believed in his team. He said, we just need to be patient. Good things will happen. We just need to execute. And so I think there's a confidence here with this Eagles side that they're starting to play with a bit of confidence in their game. And again, they're just putting that work right in on the scene when they need to be and capitalizing when it counts. Both throws went over, but they were on the spot to really convert those. So not ideal in terms of what they probably wanted from a, from a set piece point of view or maybe a playmaking point of view, but they've done a good job to get some points on the board in the second half. Big push forward, finally taken down for Toulouse. Searle, cost, cost breaking through. Offloads to Tozan, bobbled forward, but caught out of the air by Billy Searle. Check that, Simone Renda. Penalty against the United States as Paul Koss tries to dig that ball out. They want to tap and go, and they do. That was a big tap. Searle's going to go cross field. Look at this. Augsburger. Dalib runs back into play with the United States tackling. There was tons of room on that right side. Okumura saying, get it over here. Hawks finally over. Banos, and then there's Okumura for the easy try. Slides and dots it down, and Toulouse answers the United States. And again, just like that, Toulouse showing their class. Couple of phases, just pace in their attack and opening up this offense and keeping this USA defense scrambling. So we'll go all the way back to midfield. Take a look at this, just finding a seam, gets through a couple defenders, and then watch that back door offload, quick click pass inside, bobbled a little bit, but a penalty here. Augsburger does well to just get over the ball, but loses his feet, so they go for a quick cross field kick, and then after a couple phases again, just too much speed in their attack for this Eagles defense to keep up with, and they score in that far corner. How about Okamura sliding, he has not scored, and then dotting it down. A little, little flare from the Japanese player on loan during the World Cup for Toulouse. And each team has answered the call when the other team scored. Now that was a short-handed try because remember, Arturo Retier is on the bench. The U.S. took advantage with the try. And now Billy Searle will try and push this thing up to a four-point lead. That is center cut. Hydration break coming. 21 for Stade Toulouse out of Toulouse, France. 17 for the United States. The final 20, the fourth quarter, if you will, coming up from Sandy, Utah on Fox Sports. For Warriors Nation, wearing the four stripes means more. We have a very 
very special guest in our stands tonight, and her name is Hadley from Make-A-Wish Utah, and she just found out her wish to go to Disneyland has been granted. After the match tonight, over 3,000 rugby fans will band together with Hadley and try to break a Guinness World Record for the largest scrum. Proceeds of that event have been going to Make-A-Wish Utah. In Utah alone, there are over 250 different children that are waiting for their wishes to be granted. If you would like to support wishes like Hadley's, you can get more information at wish.org slash Utah. Again, that's wish.org slash Utah. Great stuff, Ashley. She was so excited to come to this match, be a part of this, and now she's going to go to Disneyland, which is the goal of every champion. Hadley is a champion, and so I talked to her for a moment before. She was excited to be here, and after the match, the Guinness World Record, as Ashley uh, mentioned, they're going to try and set that 3,000 plus. They got it captured on cameras with certain, you know, white and red. Uh, so that's going to be fun. I got to start. You going to come down for that? You going to be in the world's largest scrum, Mike? We got to do it, right? For sure. Be the first and last time I'll probably ever be in a scrum <laughs> in my life. <laughs> the dark arts of the scrum. Okay, final 20 here. Stop Tolozon down a man for two and a half with Retier in the sin bin and the big run by Lopetti trying to get through a tackle. Good tackle to keep him down. Not too many teams in MLR were able to do that this year. Peter Malcolm off the bench from the Seattle Seawolves. McCarthy with the Hounds spinning around. Support coming from the Eagles inside the 22. And holding on against the USA. Another turnover inside the 22. Quick tap and go for Valentin Del P, the new scrum half here. Here's Renda. Lots of room for him. Simone Renda gets tackled by Augsburger. Nearly goes out. Del P to Paul Cost has been all over it. Verger. As reinforcements come from the bench. Naso Keke off the bench as well. Valentin Del P. This is Tomala Combra. Joel Merkler, Spanish international. Matisse Castro Ferreira. LP going to his left. Toulouse being more patient with it. Merkler just outside the 22 for Toulouse. The reigning champions of top 14. Lots of space, but the whistle comes. And the U.S. nearly gave up another Luka Tozin try. Obstruction called. You can't block or get in the way. And the U.S. bailed out right there. And to lose that time doing it a little bit too much. But how about this? Nate Osberger stops what looked like it could have been a huge breakout play with a tremendous tackle around the ankles in the open field. Osberger just electric on offense, but so good on defense. And that time stopped, like I said, what was a really, really wide open field tackle against Toulouse because they were off to the races if that ball had stayed alive. Only 30 seconds left. With the yellow card, as you see, Clément Saint-Berry. And Jeremy mentioned earlier, he said, what was the sort of change in tune? And it has to be, part of it's got to be that yellow card that the Eagles have benefited from, having that extra player on the field. And the discipline of Toulouse, they were just ill-disciplined early in the second half. Lots of penalties against them, kept that Eagles team camped out in that end, gave them those line-out opportunities to score from. Again, even though it didn't go to hand, they were still in the right position in the right area of the field to capitalize and score. So Toulouse gifting them some of those opportunities that time. So Tiberi is done for the day with an injury. That's not good to see. Had only played a couple of minutes. Takaji Young Yan is off. Caleb Geiger is in, so what a spell for Takaji Young Yan to give the United States the lead, at least for the moment. Another spill on the lineout. The U.S. has struggled in that department tonight. But, like many times, they've been able to at least keep the ball. McCarthy. With Peter Malcolm. First USA game for him since 2018. Welcome back. Peter Malcolm in the red, white, and blue. The Eagles. Dyer. Lopetti, physical runner, pulled down by Castro Ferreira. Cardi has this one bounce and into touch, so he pushes Toulouse back with the lineup. Great kick from Cardi that time, but you talked about the young players 
in reserves for Toulouse. Check out the line speed that they've been bringing since they've come off the bench. I mean, they're just flying up off this line. Watch this one here as they come and spot Luke Cardi out the back. The Eagles off a slow ball. They try to flick this one out to their playmaker and just nothing going on that time. The line speed from Toulouse just, again, these young players coming in, trying to put their hand up to be part of this organization and get some minutes while some of their all-stars are away in France. They're really putting some pressure on this Eagles side. Lots of reinforcements for both teams. Joe Mano in for the United States, local star for the Utah Warriors who led Major League Rugby with 11 tries in the regular season. Nine of the 10 are in for Toulouse, so they have emptied the bench up to this point with just 18 minutes left and a four point advantage. Tozan and Okumura, the try scores, Tozan twice and the takeaway by Oxberger, and they'll dot it down for the lead. The Eagles take it back. What a play from one of the best wingers in MLR. And Osberger making to lose, pay the price. They're trying to play from their own two or three meter line. Playing out the back, clicking it to the outside. Augsburger just waiting on the wing and just comes flying in to make that interception. Nobody saw him coming. Our camera crew barely picked up on him in the corner of our screen. But look at this. Play comes out the back. They flick it to the outside. There's three black jerseys out there and one Nate Osberger. And Nate Osberger comes up with the interception. Here it is again from a different angle. Again. Augsburger just snuck up on them. Nobody saw him there. Tremendous play on defense on the outside from Augsburger. We talked about the electricity he brings on offense as a ball carrier. He's going forward. He keeps his legs pumping. But from the defensive point of view, he is physical. He loves collisions. And that time, what a read off his line to make that interception has put his team back in front. Ashley, the bleach blonde hair really did it for him on that pick five. And now the two-point conversion attempt by Luke Cardi will be a big one to try and push this thing to three. I've not seen a penalty goal in this game quite yet, or a drop goal, but that could come into play. Nobody's, nobody, U.S. did make one penalty goal in this, so there has been one, and that kick is good. No one's missed a kick. Perfection tonight for both teams. 24-21, three points up on Toulouse with under 20 to go. 16 to count down on this play clock. This is a good position for the Eagles to be in right now. Again, we talked about Scott Lawrence said those intensity numbers were up. They've got to go the distance. They got 15 minutes left to close this one out. 24-21, United States against the top 14 French champion, Stade Toulouse. Didn't come to the U.S. for a bunch of games, just for this one. So it's a good one for both these teams. Cardi releases the pressure. Okumura looking for this one. He's going to go quick. Teo and Tamak. His brother's on the French national team. His dad played for France. Big push forward, gets lifted up, and then finally down after about 15 meters. But the United States takes it back. That's a tremendous play by the Eagles defense that time as I was just watching some of them get up super excited because, you know, you go for that quick line out of your Toulouse and you run into some white jerseys. They stood them up. They got numbers on scene, forced that mall. You heard our referee Luke Rogan say it's a mall. And they just swallowed that play up. And that ball was not coming out of there. And that's the intensity. That's the work rate that Scott Lawrence wants to see in the 65th minute. Like you said, they're not at the World Cup. Emotions really high i'm sure as they've been watching those games all week they've been itching to play this one lots of new faces in this lineup lots of energy again 14 minutes left they've got to close this one out it's a new look forward pack for both teams nate brakely still in there for the united states but a new front row now with dupra lacombre and merkler for toulouse u.s scrum Thomas Tuval, one of those local Utah Warriors, earned his first cap in the August tour for the United States. Nate Sylvia, big push forward. Step back, Black. McCarthy looking to box kick. 
Joe Mono on the chase. This one bounces around. Toulouse keeps it. Entomac with good hands. Use it now. 13 minutes and change. United States up 24 21. Ruben Maka, new scrum half. It's McCarthy quickly to Mitch Wilson in space. Wilson offloads to Bryce Campbell, try score tonight for the United States. CC Mahoney in the mix, waiting for McCarthy to get to this ball. Okay, high advantage. Advantage being played for the U.S. Yep. McCarthy took a heavy hit off that kick. He was the one that received it before he slung it out to Mitch Wilson. And look at this, Luke Carty, here he goes. Chip to himself, looks to offload, keeps it instead, rolls over, waits for support. But he rolled too much. Toulouse sticks it back. I haven't seen it. If we have something, the team will come. Okay? Yeah, yeah, Another look at the Cardi chip and chase to himself. And there's some space in behind this defensive line. There has been all night on both sides of the ball. Cardi's the first one to spot it. And that time just keeps it himself, spins around and then rolls on the ground one too many. He knew he was isolated, didn't see any white jerseys when he was dancing around on his feet. And as he went to ground, he thought he's got to buy some time. But our referee, Luke Rogan, not happy with the extra roll that time and so penalizes him. The ball goes to Toulouse. Time off right now is Hugo Descube, 19-year-old lock for France. He's injured and being attended to. Let's take a look at the Make-A-Wish Utah moment of the match and Nate Augsburger with the interception and dot down for the United States, giving them the lead is our moment of the match. Has to be this go-ahead try for the USA. We've seen a bit of a ping-pong match going back and forth in this second half. The scoring opened up after a pretty uneventful first half, and then this one, the most recent of them, puts the Eagles ahead, and Augsburger comes out of nowhere and punishes Toulouse for trying to attack out of their own end, so deep up against that goal line, and Augsburger only has a couple yards to cover before he dots down for the USA and puts them in front in this second half. So both teams have a lot of the bench players out there. Not quite everybody out, but we're close. Stad Toulouson has put all 10 out there. They agreed that, hey, we're not gonna do 23, normally 15 plus eight subs. They're, we're, we're gonna do even more. As this one is crushed outside the 22 now in a lineup for Stad Toulouson. A team that has scored has not scored again after with a try. US scored 10 straight out of the second half, but the other team has answered with a try and taken the lead back each time. Let's see if the boys from Toulouse, France, can do it again. And that ball was not straight. Lineout's got to be a straight throw, and it wasn't, so the U.S. will take it. And here's some of that inexperience coming in for Toulouse. That is a very uncharacteristic mistake for this club as they go deep into their reserves late in the game. That, that area of the field, you cannot miss those throws. You see him shaking his head that time, disappointed with himself. That's not the throw you want. Because we're just going to keep adjusting all the time. You're trying to put your hand up and make this team as they head into the top 14 season. That's going to be a red mark against you. Your team is down by three. Big moment of that match to hit that throw, and you don't throw it straight for as a hooker. That's a tough call. And you'll be regretful of that one as you head back to France. With this cube out, Joshua Brennan came back in on the blood sub. Start to lose on. Great look inside of the scrum here. Toulouse pushing it back. U.S. gets out of there quick. Thomas Tuaval, physical runner, originally from the U.K. Now in the United States as that kick is blocked. And Toulouse has it. Ruben Maka, Joel Merkler. Physical contest, 10 meters from the center of the pitch with 10 minutes and change left in this game. Maka over to Clément Verger. There's Brennan back in. Captain of the U-20 team for France. Leo Banos. On loan to Toulouse. Maka. Senda. Renda, excuse me. Tackled by Nate Silvia. Of San Diego. 
Verger. Now Toulouse being patient with it, trying to see if they can find a crease. Backwards off white, US has it. Caleb Geiger from the Iron Workers. Here's Augsburger. Here's Geiger. A scout talked to him in a restaurant in 2021. That's how he started playing. Now he's playing for the US. You never know where you might be seen, Mike. And Toulouse takes it back, holding on against the U.S. Toulouse now with 10 minutes on the clock. This is one of the first times we've seen them slow it down and put this ball out of bounds. It tells you they know they're in a ball game and field position is going to be important to them. Their last line out throw went awry, didn't go straight. But this time, let's see where this lands. Inside the U.S. 22, maybe not exactly the spot they wanted it, but still good field position for Toulouse. Nine minutes left to play. This is a big moment. The USA needs to make a big stand here. In comes Michael Basca for Nick McCarthy, who put in a really solid 71 here. And new hooker into the game, Tomala Combre, 19 years old, part of the U-26 Nations Championship team from France. We'll get the line out. Inside the 22 for Toulouse. Handled well, all forms. Big push for the red and black. West holding it up now. That's twice they've got to use it or they'll lose it here. Ruben Maka trying to dig it out. It's taken a while though. Balls out, says Luke Rogan. And the U.S. takes it away. Good work by the Eagles, as Toulouse was patient, but too patient on that one. Let's check in with Ashley for more on starting tight head prop Paul Mullen for the United States. Hey guys, it's one of my favorite things to do throughout the week is talk to the players about fun storylines, funny things that have happened, really anything I can get them to give me. And everybody on this USA Eagles squad, all they told me was talk to Paul Mullen. So I tried to get in touch with Paul Mullen and the only thing he had to say to me was that he is one of the best personalities on the team. That was about it. If you're a Utah Warriors fan, that sounds just about right. So it was just a great crack up. Everyone said he was going to give me something and all he wanted to do was tell me he's got an awesome personality. You know what, Paul normally gives some info, but he's keeping close to the best this week. Thought he'd give us a little more, so Paul, maybe next time he'd give us a little more, but He's a crack up, man. One of the best personalities in uh, American rugby. He's fantastic. You see Michael Basca with the ball now. Michael told me it's good to be back in with the USA. He was out of the mix a little bit last year after playing in 2021 on the tour that went and played uh, New England, or excuse me, England in England, which was pretty cool in 2021. New Zealand in the United States and DC as well. Basca, former Utah Warrior here locally as well. Played in D2 in France last year. Knows a little bit of French. And now he's in at scrum half for the U.S. Not on the ball. Not on the ball. United States good backed roll. up well inside Toulouse's 22. Cardi, low liner, but a good kick. And into touch, so pushing Toulouse back with just six and a half left. So Cardi relieves a little bit of pressure that time. I'm going to go back to a comment you made earlier about one of the subs for Toulouse, La Combra, who's 19 years old. We talk about an inexperience. We looked at this Eagles roster, and you and I were speaking before the game. They might not have a lot of experience, but they are a little bit on the older side as far as age goes. We talk about bringing in young players and getting them exposure and experience and really, really looking forward to the next World Cup. That's what you need. We need some 19-year-old, 20-year-old, 21-year-old kids in these Eagles jerseys over the course of the next couple of years to build towards that World Cup. Because I make no mistake, La Combra is going to benefit from it. We need some Eagles players in that age group that are playing for this team right now. There were two St. Mary's College players currently in camp, didn't make the 23. Dominic Bisag among them. We got a cap in Europe. Banos calls his own number. Good tackle by Caleb Geiger of New York Iron Workers. Maxime Dupra. This one's coming down to the wire. Five minutes and change left. The United States by three over Stade Toulouse, the reigning French champs. No one's won more French titles or European championships than this club. 
And with rugby in the air with the World Cup in France. Spilled forward, knocked on by Toulouse. The U.S. will get the scrum. And again, the U.S. digging in in the 75th minute. This is exactly what Scott Lawrence talked about and exactly what he wanted to see. He said their work rate wasn't good enough. Their numbers in training, as far as the intensity at which they were training at, wasn't good enough in the summer series, and they started to fall off towards the end of the game. But he said, I promise you, when you watch this team on Saturday night, they're going to be able to go the distance. Our numbers are as good as they've ever been at practice. And here it is, 75th minute. They're still winning collisions. They're still hustling to cover those gaps around the ball to make sure that there are no offloads that are free to Toulouse. This is the intensity that the Eagles have been needed to play with for the full 80 minutes throughout their entire 2023 campaign. And I have a feeling over the course of the next five minutes, they're going to close this game out and they're going to reap the benefits of it. Playing on home soil certainly helps. Motivated by being in the United States in front of a friendly home crowd for the first time since July 2022. Line Latu in from the American Raptors, who are a development side. Former Eastern Washington wide receiver. Had 52 grabs for 745 yards and six touchdowns in his college career. Playing fly half now. All the subs are in the game for both teams. United States with it. Latu with the chip. And that is out on the full, meaning it's got to come back to where he kicked it. And you were just talking about Latu, and that is a that is a tough mistake there for the Eagles. They had some space on the outside. He goes to the left boot. Tries to put it over the line, but I think in this situation, you're at the 77th minute mark. Possession is so important. Hold on to the ball, go through the phases. Yeah, you might want to play some field position game, but you definitely do not want to give the ball to Toulouse in your own half with three minutes or just about four minutes left on the clock. Samala Combre to Banos. Quickly, Ruben Maka. Was that a forward pass? Combre. Tackled by CC Mahoney. 6'8, 295. He's a giant. Valentin Del P playing fly half now. Maka stays on that near side. Okamura. Try score. US by three. Happened in the 63rd. From Nate Oxberger. Maxime Dupra. Maka. Merkler. Toulouse being patient with it, hoping the U.S. will yield something here. Cost through the middle, big tackle by Kenny Nasokeke. Now ball gets wide. Renda to his right. Del P inside the 22 now. Entomac, who's gone the entire distance. U.S. all over it. Joe Mano right there, nearly grabbed it on the jackal. Toulouse now knocking on the door. Can the U.S. make one last stand with two minutes left? Maka to Merkler. The French being patient. Cost. A war of attrition now, 15 meters away. This has got to be well over 10 phases, pushing almost towards 15 for Toulouse, and that means 10 to 15 phases of defense for the Eagles. Oh, the fake and. Given inside to Delib. That was a great play. Five meters away now. U.S. retreating. Castro Ferreira three meters away. U.S. felt like they got it there. They do not get the call. The keeper. The push forward by Verge. The U.S. trying to make a last stand on the try zone. Mahoney and Geiger pick and jam all day right now for Josh Brennan and Toulouse. The pad on the goalpost spinning. A massive humanity right in front of the post with the game on the line. Under a minute left plus stoppage. U.S. trying to dig it out. Merkler right there. And the whistle comes in the U.S. takes it back. Holding on called. The Eagles stand. What a moment for this USA squad. At the death, they stopped to loose on the one meter line. 
Wow. How about this? Just phase after phase after phase. And the Eagles answered the bell every time. They were under pressure. They bend, but they would not break. And right here, we saw them get over the ball a few times. You said it. They didn't get exactly the call. But look at this. Two white jerseys on scene. Talk about body position and contact. That was great. But the ball does not go into touch from Latu. And then, the, then it goes into touch. And perhaps the U.S. have won. And that's it. The United States defeats Stad Toulouson 24-21. It came down to the wire. And in a game that really opened up in the scoring, it came down to a defensive play by the United States. Wow, defense is right. Defense is right. Look at those smiles. Look at that. Some happy fans, some happy players. Take a bow for the Eagles. They have done a tremendous, tremendous job, and they went the full 80 tonight. And this is that sequence at the end of the game where you nearly had a heart attack, I think, up here in the booth. They missed touch. They went a little bit too long with the kick. And then to lose, just sloppy and careless at the breakdown, kick the ball out of bounds. And the Eagles, elation at the end of the game. Local guy Joe Mano with that last tackle, so good with the ball, but his defense ends up helping the United States. We'll talk with the man of the match as the United States takes down Toulouse 24-21 in Sandy, Utah. Tonight's match is brought to you by Intermountain Health, advocate of preventative care. The Utah Sports Commission, the state of sport. And by Destination Sport, taking you further. What a night in Utah. The United States defeats Stade Toulouson, the French champions. 24 to 21, the game winning score, 63rd minute. Nate Oxberger with the interception